Thank you very much, and thank you very much for inviting Save the Elephants to come and talk today at this very interesting and important conference. Um, I'm also here representing uh, the University of Oxford. So thank you. Yes, I'd like to give you um, a case study from our Human Elephant Coexistence Program, uh, specifically looking at uh, my work uh, the use, using honeybees as an elephant deterrent. I'm just going to start off with one map for those of you who are not from Kenya um, as an overview of where we have elephants in Kenya. Um, the exact figure is, a, is, is not quite known but it's around 25 to 30,000 elephants and those green areas are where the elephants are found. Um, as we've heard already, not all of them are inside national parks. Only about 8% um, of the wildlife areas is covered by national parks so elephants roam quite widely outside our protected areas. Um, these are all the sites within Kenya where Save the Elephants has projects. Um, I can't go into all of them in my 12 minutes, but I'm going to tell you a little bit about the work I've been doing in these two sites. One up in northern Sambrula, Kipia, uh, where there's around seven, seven and a half thousand elephants, and one down in my latest uh, project site down in Savo in Taita Taveta, uh, where we have around 12,000 elephants in the Savo conservation area. So these are two critical elephant zones, not only for Kenya, but for the whole of Africa. So this is actually a photograph I took in my very first year of my PhD and it's sort of the dream image really of what elephants should be looking like. You know, a beautiful matriarch crossing a pristine river with lovely water, beautiful uh, social system with lots of beautiful calves and a real future for the animal. Unfortunately, this is not what most Africans are living with. In Kenya, this is the more common way that people experience elephants. Um, it's a very negative experience um, and often a very destructive experience. These are photos taken during the daytime, which is one of the harder times to see crop parading. Most crop parading happens at night time. Um, but this is very terrifying for people living in small huts uh, with no support system for them. Um, so this is the issue that I work on specifically at our human elephant coexistence program, specifically on farmer interactions with elephants. Uh, the, the damage can be extensive. I'm sure you're familiar with crop parading and the type of crushing of crops, ripping up. You can have an entire crop destroyed in one night. Uh, fences are broken down. Uh, people are terrified to come out of their houses sometimes. Um, and kids can be uh, deterred from going to school. So from the community side, this is a very negative experience. Um, obviously, from the elephant point of view, it's also very negative. Uh, this is a bull with an arrow right in its head, being being dealt with by KWS, who are very skilled out here, um, and unfortunately not all of them make it. So we have to deal with uh, more retaliations that we're seeing against elephants um, and more injuries and destruction that we've just seen in the previous talk. Um, so this is something we really want to uh, reduce. We want to increase coexistence between these two species. So this is one option. Uh, this is actually, no offence, but this is what we call the South African option, which is fencing off all the national parks. Um, we're quite loath to do this in Kenya. We like having free roaming wildlife. But this is certainly one option, that you just fence everyone off. But this also means the communities have no access to their natural resources as well. So although it may stop elephants coming out and lions coming out, what you end up with is a total hard barrier between communities benefiting from those resources and wildlife that gets trapped inside small ecosystems. And then you have to implement all sorts of management techniques to keep the animal numbers level. Now this, is a, this can be quite negative when it leads to culling um, and very controversial methods like that. Uh, one of these fences has been tried in Kenya. Um, it was quickly dismissed by some of the bull elephants who decided just to walk straight through it. Um, they're pretty tough, these bulls, and where one of them makes a hole in the fence, it doesn't take long for the rest to follow. Um, and we've even seen young bull elephants being pushed into fences, uh, falling flat on their sides, and then big bulls walking over them and sort of, thank you very much, you know, you've just flattened the fence for us. So I'm not saying that electric fences don't work. They can, of course. They are um, a very effective way of, of reducing wildlife conflict. They don't always work. And what can happen is one breakthrough can result in the wild animals being trapped on the community side. And then you end up with mayhem for a few days while you're trying to get elephants back through an electrified fence. Um, and so it is a very expensive option. And um, really, it's, it's quite challenging for most countries to, to cover the maintenance of these sort of deterrents. Um, so, oh, that seems to have stopped. Just trying to get the next slide. Okay, so um, this is just a very short video. I don't know if it's going to play um, of elephants trying to get through this fence. Uh, sorry, it doesn't seem to be working today. It's just got jammed. Oh, great. 
It's just a 10 second video, but it just shows how agile these elephants can be getting underneath these fences. Um, so that was a specific elephant deterrent fence with a hedgehog uh, overview. Um, and look at them. This is, they're so clever. You try and put up deterrents for elephants, they quickly work out what, what, how to get around it. Um, so at my project, I started looking at this uh, natural deterrent system using honeybees and elephants' fear of honeybees. Now, this sounds quite bizarre. Um, how can honeybees possibly deter such enormous pachyderms? Um, well, it turns out that there are plenty of wild honeybees in acacia trees around Africa. And as elephants are foraging on trees, they're breaking branches, foraging on the leaves, and these wild beehives are clearly swarming into their faces, stinging them, and the elephants are naturally avoiding those trees with beehives in. Um, so this is a relationship that must have been going on for millennia. We've only just discovered this, um, that elephants are avoiding trees with bees in. Um, so for my PhD, I ended up working out how to uh, test this theory. Um, and instead of throwing wild beehives at wild elephants, which I probably would die in that process, I actually decided to record the sound of bees, play it back to elephants with a playback technique using a fake tree trunk which we built. Um, and I'm just going to show you a couple of videos of how the elephants respond uh, to, those, to those bee sounds. Um, it's very dramatic. They, uh, they actually have a very uh, immediate response. Um, so here we've just got a few elephants resting under trees. You can see a large bull. And I've hidden the speaker off to the left-hand side in the bush. So I'm well away from where the bee sounds are. You can just hear the bee sounds in the background. And this is how elephants respond. Their heads go up. They immediately start backing away. Uh, the bull looks quite worried as well at this moment. And they start scattering as quickly as possible in the opposite direction. This is a very quick response. Again, there's another very large bull elephant under that tree, and the speaker's hidden well off to the right. The response is very quick. There's a slightly slower response just to show you their actual behavior. So the ears go out, there's quite a bit of head turning from side to side, and also the trunk starts swinging. They're clearly smelling in the air. And that young one on the ground is just about to be kicked. There we are, and she's been told, get up. And then one female will trigger a retreat. The other elephants are smelling the air, trying to locate the bees. And at the back of the group, the matriarch is not impressed at all. She's got her head well up, and she's clearly alarmed. Now, this is what we saw very frequently, but this is the best video to show it. These elephants pick up pace and actually start running. Um, turns out that they actually think bees are about to attack them. So when we analysed all our videos, we, we played this multiple times, of course using control sounds as well, because we want to make sure it wasn't just that they were running from a sound coming out of the bush. Um, but the distance moved was really significant. Um, so they move significantly further. Um, they start head shaking when they hear bees, as if to knock bees out of the air. Um, and they also uh, vocalise twice as much, if not more, in response to bee sounds. And this vocalisation warns other elements to, uh, elephants to retreat. Um, so these, these behavioural responses, uh, there's so much data in there. Please have a look at our website to download those papers to explain all the methods. Um, but it really has led to um, the discovery that elephants are scared of bees and the development of a beehive fence. This was the very, very first beehive fence I built back in 2007 uh, using traditional log beehives that cost about, I don't know, about $50 for all the hives. Um, the fence was very cheap and we protected one little farm. We've developed uh, Kenyan top bar beehive fences and now we're primarily using uh, Langstroth beehive fences. Uh, the system is working so well that we've now moved into basically honey production mode because these beehive fences are protecting farms as much as 80% from elephant deterrence. In this photograph, you can see that we've actually, instead of having one hive every 10 metres uh, with an interconnecting wire, we've actually replaced every other hive with a dummy hive, which is simply a piece of plywood. So we have an item every 10 metres, but it's a fake beehive every 10 metres, which costs about $2, and then the beehive is around $50 every other. Uh, slot, which means we have bees every 20 metres. If an elephant tries to push through between those uh, two hives, uh, it's going to hit that wire and cause the whole system to swing. 
So every single beehive starts shaking, the bees come out and sting whatever's the closest warm object um, to that hive. Um, so we've moved the project um, in 2009 down to the Savo area, to Taita Tiveta, to an area called Sagala, uh, where there's a very uh, excellent human-elephant conflict hotspot for us to use this system and to test it thoroughly with a whole group of fantastic farmers. Um, and we have a very active internship and student program. We have tons of students coming to help us with their projects, um, and we get them all out there into the field. Um, so this is our study site. Uh, we are um, on this front line of conflict from elephants coming out of Savo East National Park. We have loads of camera traps out trying to see how the elephants respond um, and we're working closely with our farmers. At the moment we have 25 right there, we have other sites now, but this is the 25 farmer site that we're working with um, and they are basically our researchers. They're telling us how it's working, what they like, what they don't like, how to improve the fence um, and effectively this is what we're aiming for is crops, um, small scale crops, one to two acres of, of farmland well protected uh, by these beehive fences. Um, and allowing the elephants to still move through the communities. We're not fencing off communities. That's not something we're able to do with beehive fences. Um, I don't think that would work. These are very small, confined beehive fences that the farmer actively manages himself. Um, and so uh, these are some of the data sheets that we're seeing. Uh, we usually have half the farm which is a control and half the farm which is protected by beehive fences. This is just a few of thousands of data sheets we have showing how effective they are. They're just keeping elephants out of an acre to an acre and a half, um, and the farmers are then able to concentrate their effort in that acre and a half, uh, which is very exciting. And we're getting great camera trap shots of elephants just getting up to the fence and just going, whoa, and just backing off. Uh, and sometimes trying to get through the wire. Uh, there's a couple of pictures here that he, didn't, he never made it through, which is nice. Um, so these are big bull elephants. Um, so some of the data in our latest paper that came out this year looked at three and a half years of data, so please do download that. It's roughly 80% effective at keeping the elephants out, 20% of the elephants are still breaking through. I don't think there's many deterrents out there which are 100%, but when they did break through, they broke through in very small numbers, so ones and twos breaking through and the farmers were able to chase them out. They create less damage um, and the overall effect is that the farmers increase their yield. Um, and this is the critical element as the beehive fences produce an entire new business for the farmers. So the production of honey is well established across Africa as a really good livelihood benefit, requires no refrigeration, very simple processing, it's incredibly good for you. The prices of sugar are flying through the roof, I'm sure you're all aware. So for communities to use sugar, I mean to use honey instead of sugar, to sell it um, and to give it to their families is, is a significant, significant improvement to their livelihoods. Um, we're also doing a lot of studies on how the bees are impacting the natural environment and doing a lot of pollination uh, for the local area. We're doing pollination surveys. We have a bee fodder herbarium trying to understand exactly which plants the bees are really foraging on. We can then encourage farmers to plant pollinator banks around their farms. And what I'm really keen on now is we've developed a permaculture garden to show farmers once you're effectively constrained within your beehive fence, how do you improve your, your agriculture within that acre and a half? Because what we want to do is stop farmers slashing and burning further into their wildlife zones. We want to basically limit them effectively to their farms but improve their livelihoods at the same time. So you have to have um, nitrogen fixing plants, you have to have plenty of bee pollinator plants, you need to have different types of um, produce for the farmers and their children throughout the year. So we can't ignore the farmer health and in fact we're not doing that at all, we're really trying to encourage that. Uh, we're now using sunflowers as well as a, as a boost for the honey production. Um, turns out that elephants don't eat sunflowers. So this is something we're working on now. We're doing a master's project on the fact that sunflowers could be a new crop uh, producing oil, uh, producing uh, pollination services, and it's a really super crop that grows well in Kenya. So I've, this is a very quick talk, but we have tons of publications. We try really hard to publish in peer-reviewed journals uh, because people didn't believe us at the beginning of this, so we've now gone through peer review many times. All those publications are freely available to download, including our Beehive Fence Construction Manual. I have a copy here, but the PDF is all online. Um, and we also have a toolbox calendar, which is basically 12 different ways for farmers to live with elephants. Uh, beehive fences are simply one. So Save the Elephants is working on a whole load of other methods. Um, I think this is the best method. Um, it's the only fence that actually generates money for the farmers. Every other electric and every other elephant fence costs the farmer money. Um, so we're really hoping that some of you might try it in your countries. Uh, please do get in touch um, and please look at the website. Everything's free on there to download. Um, and thank you to all our donors and supporters, including the United Nations, um, who kicked us off back in 2011 with a, with a, with a prize, which helped us build our research centre. So thank you very much.